Um, brilliant. So, yeah, so I work in the wildlife garden at the Natural History Museum. Uh, this is a little overhead view of the garden. Um, and we've got a lovely group of volunteers who help us look after the habitats in the garden. Um, and I just thought I would show you some of the ways that we incorporate sustainability. Um, so it's partly through the teaching and training that we do, um, partly through the actual practices on site um, and some of the things that are just kind of domestic everyday stuff. Um, so we do a lot of training about what wildlife there is in the wildlife garden and, um, and how to record it. Um, and when teaching about that, you just come across stuff that's affected by climate change. Um, this is a willow emerald damselfly. 10 years ago, would have been a very rare sight in London, not anymore. Um, and it's, you know, it's a big obvious species. It's not, a, it's not, it's not shy. <laughs> and it's now the wildlife garden is full of them. Um, but there are loads of examples like that. Um, and we also teach about the intrinsic value of all wildlife. So even slugs are friends in the wildlife garden. Um, and fungi also comes into, into um, our wildlife teaching a lot because fungi is just so important with uh, decomposition and nutrient cycling and sequestering carbon. Um, and talking of nutrient cycling, uh, compost bins. <laughs> so on the practical side, we are we love our compost bins. Um, and they're pretty much the focal point of the garden, but it's not the only way that we, we use stuff in the wildlife garden. Uh, so we've been working on trying to reduce the amount of leaves going off site because that's pretty much the only thing at the moment that does sometimes go off site into a green waste skip is some of the leaves and the paths. Um, and this, what's happening here is the creation of a leaf pen, so more of the leaves can be used on site and create more habitat. Um, and we also use any dead wood that we produce from, from cutting trees back um, around the garden to create more habitat. Um, and that might be in the big lot you saw in the previous slide or in sort of these smaller um, dead hedges. So the kind of smaller twiggier stuff. Um, and sometimes it can be kind of going back towards traditional techniques. So we needed to make a boat for maintaining our ponds on site. Um, and we decided we're not going to use plastic. We'd go back to the old ways and, uh, and build a coracle out of willow, which is obviously much more uh, renewable. Uh, skip over that string for now. Um, and then looking forward, um, so we've got new garden designs coming in. And one of the really important parts of that is using using the soils that we've got on site. And we explain this, you know, with the volunteers, what's happening as well. Um, and in some ways, this is quite looking to the future. So making like really interesting things you can grow plants in that are made out of ground up bits of old Darwin courtyard. Um, so that's a kind of very future looking way of being sustainable. Um, and then just everyday bits. So we've got a selection of little mismatch mugs that we've uh, scavenged from the rejects from the NHM shop or uh, from local charity shops. Uh, we've got a compost toilet, um, which is obviously shared with our lovely spider friends. Um, and we try and be really minimal with, with things like heating and water use. So everything's just used on the site. Um, and overall, it just makes it a really sort of happy place to be because everything that we're doing we're trying to do with nature and for nature um, and showing that that isn't actually too bad a way to to spend a day. Mm -hmm.